What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Thank you guys so much for the support. Before I even start this video, I'd just like to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas because this is actually the day before Christmas. I hope you guys have a great time and spend a lot of quality time with your family. Let's go ahead and get this video started. So today, I wanna have a sit down topic over how I started bass fishing because I get so many messages saying, Noah, how'd you start bass fishing? And all these messages and I'm like, I have to make a video over it. I think this is gonna be a very quality video. It's gonna be awesome. Before I go anywhere, at the end of this video, I will announce the GoPro giveaway winner, which I did run on Instagram and I also ran on YouTube. So I will be announcing the winner for that. So one lucky winner. So make sure you watch this video all the way through to the end. I'd really appreciate it if you watch this through and kind of understand my story and how I started bass fishing. So let's go ahead and get this started, guys. Where should I start off? Let's say, let's start off all the way before I even held a fishing pole. Pretty much when I was younger, I never bass fished. I pretty much fished, my parents owned a bigger boat. They had it docked at a marina. And I would always go fish for, you know, little brim and stuff like that when I was younger. Um, I would just fish off the docks with like little biscuit dough on little tiny hooks. And I would catch a ton of tiny fish, ton of little um, brim. Honestly, they weren't that tiny, you know. I mean, there's some big ones as well. As I got older, I'd say around 11 years old, me and my grandpa started to go catfishing. So we would go to this lake. Um, if anyone's in the Gwinnett County area, Atlanta area, I'd say it's called Twin Bridges. And it's a little catfish lake. It's pretty much just a little pay lake. Um, you pay like $20 and you can fish all day. And I would start off there and I would go catfishing. And that's that's pretty much what we did. We'd go out there and we'd just slay the catfish. It was insane. We'd catch so many catfish. Um, every time we went, it was a blast. Me and my grandpa used to do that all the time. And that's kind of what like launched me into fishing. After that happened, my grandpa did talk to some of his buddies that owned some private ponds. From there on, we actually started to go pond fishing at um, some of his buddies' ponds. And I wasn't like hardcore into it at that time to where I was throwing a bait cast or where I was throwing artificial lures. We are using live bait. We were using like little night crawlers. That's where we were using to catch all the fish. So we would go to all those ponds and um, throw out night crawlers on bobbers, catch a ton of brim. I mean brim like the size of your hand and catch a ton of big bass. I just remember like all the fish, I swear, like these ponds that I actually fish in my videos, like those are the ponds I used to fish when I was younger. <laughs> Those ponds used to be so much better. I couldn't imagine like going there with artificial lures like back then if I knew how to bass fish and just slaying the fish because on those night crawlers we would go catch like five pounders like it was nothing. Like wouldn't even think nothing of it. And you know like I, I get hype over a fish but like back then I really didn't. I mean yeah I got excited but like I wouldn't realize the value of like a five to ten pound fish. Caught a few fish around ten pounds. That's pretty much where my personal bestness came from. Personal best on the lakes around eight and a half, give or take. It's just a lot of fun. So I continued to fish with my grandpa and I got my first bait caster, which was actually from Bass Pro Shops. It was one of those combos. I don't know if you guys remember. I don't know if you guys have been fishing this long. To where they had those combos. Um, it's just like a cheap Bass Pro Shops combo. And it was actually orange reel. I can't remember the exact name of it, um, but it was Bass Pro Shops brand. That was actually my first bait caster. I believe I still have it at my grandpa's house. It was just on this crappy pole. It's probably like a 6'6 six, six pole. I started to learn how to cast a bait caster, which at this time my parents still owned their big boat. So when I would go to the marina, I would kind of go on the end of the marina <laughs> and start casting the bait caster. And I would dial it down, you know, figure out how to cast this thing. If you guys don't already know, my dad is actually allergic to fish, so he really doesn't fish. He doesn't fish often. The only time he fishes is when he goes out and wants to spend time with me on the water, and we go out fishing then. My grandpa was the one who kind of hopped me into fishing. So I was kind of learning, you know, the whole bait caster thing. My dad knew a little bit about it on my own for the most part, and just going out there and just, you know, casting and casting and casting. Once I got that down, I started to take that to the ponds and everything and learn more about, you know, using artificial bait, using lures to catch bass. And that's when, you know, I started to learn a lot. I was adapting over that. And we ended up moving marinas to a different marina. And I remember one day I was fishing. I would always fish under the walkways by the marinas. And I would always fish my bait caster right there. I'd always try to catch bass, you know, throw like a little shaky head or uh, a little rattle trap or a spinnerbait, whatever it was. And th at that time, I really didn't know much about bass fishing. Our buddy now, but my parents, the people next to my parents' boat actually owned a big boat. Their son actually owned a bass boat. So he came pulling up on the bass boat. This is a funny story. And um, I was over there like walking around, like looking at it and everything. Like, I was just amazed. Like I've never seen anything like this. Like if I think about it like now, like it was just like a standard... I'm, I'm assuming, I can't remember exactly. It's just like a standard old bass boat, but to me it was like 
a million dollar boat. Like it looked so good. I was like, oh my God, look at all the sparkles. You know, it was just so fascinating. I thought that was really cool and I was just staring at the boat. And so I just couldn't, I just could not stop looking at the boat. He actually ended up taking me out on the trolling motor around the docks. His name was actually Robert. Pretty much got me in the bass fishing. After that, I, he was letting me around the trolling motor. You know, we we're just riding around the bank. I, I just fell in love with it. Like we were out there fishing. We didn't even catch anything, but like, all in all, I'm pretty sure I had a bite, but all in all, like that pretty much got me attached to it. I was like, I want to go bass fishing. Like, this is what I want to do. So I guess a few months passed. Um, I kept talking to my dad about it. I was young at the time. Um, I kept talking about, you know, let's, let's go fishing, let's go fishing. So we ended up purchasing a small bass tracker, which is just a little metal boat. I started bass fishing out of that. So we would go on Lake Lanier, and if you guys don't know what a bass tracker is, it's just a little metal boat. This was like a very small one though. It wasn't like a super nice bass tracker. It was, you know, it was just a regular one. I think it had like a, a 40 horse or like a 50 horse on it. It was just a little tiny boat just to get us around and do some fishing. So that started off. We used that for a while. You know, I have tons of pictures of us in that boat. Started to go around Lake Lanier on it. And it was just very... Lake Lanier is a party lake. I'm gonna let you guys know. It's one of the biggest party lakes. Like if you guys want to go party, go to Lake Lanier. It's just what it is. Tons of party boats. Tons of big yachts. Like just a lot of big boats. A big luxury boat. Speed boats. Everything. If you go on the weekends, you're getting screwed. That's why, like, if I fish on the near, I tend to go during the week because on the weekends it is extremely packed and it is not the best idea to go out there on the weekends. So, yeah, so we ended up just getting destroyed in that boat. Like, every time we would go out, and because my dad worked all the time and most of the time we would only go out on the weekends, that's the time that we had. I did go out during the week every once in a while. My grand, my grandpa would go with me. He went with me like a few times when we'd go out there. Well, over a time span, I would, I would want to say a year, we ended up upgrading to a nitro. I'm sure most of you guys know what a nitro is. It was an 18 foot nitro. It was just a small little nitro. Nothing big at all. It was, it was just a little nitro. And um, ended up upgrading to that. We fished out of that for like another year and decided we still got our butts kicked in that thing. So that was a little boat. It was nothing big. And then we ended up looking into more boats. Ended up meeting a, a guy named Kevin Stowers. He was selling his boat, and we ended up getting a Ranger, upgrading to a Ranger, and that's like luxury as it gets. Very blessed, very thankful that I could hop into something like that. And that's kind of like where it all started. Once I hopped into that Ranger, I I mean, we were going out on the lake all the time. Like we were fishing all the time, like religiously. Going out on the lake, I was learning more every time I went out. Like I was learning a lot, like a lot. So at that point in time, I, I know this sounds weird, but even when I was younger, I loved to, to stuff, sell things. I loved to like start things. And my dad was a business owner, so that just made sense, right? I saw, my dad owns an airsoft arena called SS Airsoft. It's pretty much like paintball. And I used to go there all the time when I was younger. And I followed pretty much that niche of airsoft that airsoft was doing, which was a lot of GoPro filming, which I did previously when I was younger. So I, I, I looked into that airsoft niche, saw that they're doing filming. And I was like, you know what? No one's doing filming in the fish industry. Cause I started like, you know, five years ago. I mean, there's a few people doing it. I believe, you know, John B was out for a while. Um, I believe Fluke was doing it for a while. There's a few people doing it. I, I, yeah, Flair, Flair started a year before me. And um, you know, there's a few people doing it. So I decided to hop into it. It, it just, there wasn't too much content out there when I decided to hop in. So I started GoPro and started filming. It was absolutely awesome. Started capturing a lot of content, created Kicking Their Bass, which was a brand because I just didn't want to, you know, result in myself as a personality itself. I wanted to build it around a brand. So came up with a brand name, came up with everything, started producing clothing. As you guys can tell right here, if you guys haven't checked it out, check it out. Pretty much it just started blowing up, you know, started to learn a ton about bass fishing. I mean, if you go back in my videos and you watch like my beginning videos, it's honestly hilarious. I should go make some like roast videos over myself. I learned so much, it's, it's ridiculous. So after having that Ranger for around, you know, two and a half, I'd say two and a half years, maybe three years, we decided to, well, I ended up getting contacted by Ranger. And Ranger has a deal for their pro staff members because I am on Ranger's pro staff and it required me to go get a brand new boat. Or it wasn't brand new, it, it required me to get a new boat. That Ranger that I had, I believe was a 2007. Now the Ranger that I have now is a 2014. So I ended up upgrading to that and I've had that boat for the past, I'd say two and a half years. So it's been amazing, it's been an awesome boat and I've learned so much, it's been absolutely phenomenal. And you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for, you know, my grandpa showed me, you know, everything about fishing, taking me out fishing, which I really respect a lot. And also my dad and my parents for supporting me along the way because when I was like 13 years old, I wasn't gonna be able to buy a little metal boat. It just wasn't gonna happen. And for me to be able to build this brand up and generate revenue and build a company pretty much and been able to support myself and still the support of my family, it's absolutely amazing. But it's just, it just mind blows me guys. Like. 
that five years ago to look back, I was in, you know, this little, well, I wasn't in the metal boat five years ago, but eight years to look back, I was in this little metal boat and just to build up now is just insane. Or to look back 10 years from now and say I was fishing at ponds with live bait and to just look and see how much I learned and processed. But the only reason I processed that much information, the only reason I learned so much is because this was my desired passion. I played baseball my whole life. I think this can be another topic, but I played baseball my whole life. I quit baseball for fishing because I realized that baseball was not my passion. I thought it was my passion. It was something I liked doing, I loved doing. It was taking a lot of my time. Jumped into fishing, realized I can do fishing for the rest of my life. And it's something I truly loved. I love being out on the water and that's where I pursued 100%. So, you know, 10 hours a day, you know, I was just always thinking and researching and looking up about fishing and going fishing and learning information. I put that all together and learned so much over these years. And in my opinion, I learned more than most people could ever learn that quick just because I'm very passionate about the sport. It's, it's just been phenomenal. I'm very blessed for it. And I just thought you guys would, you know, want to hear this story and, you know, maybe be inspired by it and, you know, teach more people how to fish and bring more people into the sport. The sport is growing so much. And what I've built, kicking their bass, isn't just about fishing. You know, it's about striving to be the best. It's about working hard. It's about motivating and inspiring because that's why I built this brand is to inspire others to teach others because when I was fishing if you guys look at the process of how I grew up and how I started fishing I started from ground zero fishing in a catfish pond worked my way up without knowing much you have to result in YouTube videos nowadays to learn a lot of information you have to result in Google to learn a lot of information there wasn't many things out there so I decided to take that and share the love with everyone else and teaching people how to fish and inspiring people to go fish tournaments and inspire, inspiring people to go fish high school tournaments. And that's kind of where I took the ball and ran with it because there really, was, really wasn't much when I was growing up. And there really wasn't much when I started into it. Now it's like blown up, it's absolutely crazy. I went from fishing high school tournaments with 20 boats and now you go into high school tournaments and you 500. That is freaking unbelievable. That's 25 times, like that's unreal. The numbers I've blown up, very thankful for it. And I'm very thankful for you guys. That is my story. That, that is simply my story right there. I'm sorry if this was a very long video, but I'm going to announce a good proof of giveaway winner now. I just think that this is a cool video and I wanna start adding story time videos into my channel because I think it presents a lot of value on where I came from and hopefully is inspiring to other people that are beginning to become a bass angler. And another video that I might hit on topic is how to start a fishing business or how to start a fishing brand and how to get yourself into the market, how to get sponsors. If you guys wanna see, see a series like that, be sure to smash that like button and comment below, let me know because you know a lot of you guys are supporters are just gonna smash the like button, which I appreciate so much, but I can't really dial down You know who's actually liking that, why they're liking that. So comment below if you guys wanna see a series like that on how I built Kicking Their Bass TV and how to, how to go about it on building a brand in the fishing industry or building a business in the fishing industry blowing up with it and conquering everything. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and hop in to the GoPro segment of this video. To the GoPro segment, guys. Thank you guys so much for the support. The reason why I made this GoPro giveaway was because I made 500 uploads on YouTube and I wouldn't be there without you guys because you guys motivate me. Even though I inspire and motivate some of you guys, you guys actually motivate me, each and every single one of you guys, to try to be the best that I can be and post three videos a week and just blow this channel up in the past five years it's been absolutely amazing you know we're at a kind of steady pace right now but that does not matter because i know i'm presenting value to a lot of you guys here for the gopro winner i actually took what i did is i took everyone that entered on youtube and everyone that entered on instagram layered them all out into a generator and generated some one 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 lucky winner so the lucky winner is nico all-star bass it is i believe that's his name i'll pop it up on the screen thank you so much for the support i will have more giveaways coming soon guys a lot more giveaways coming soon because so don't think this is the last one because i actually have one that i might be releasing in a day or two so stay tuned for that thank you guys so much for the support that means the world guys awesome nico i believe you're from instagram yes you're on, you are from instagram because i remember seeing underscores send me a dm on my team kicking their best
or kicking the rest. S send a DM on Noah team and kicking the rest TV. And if you are a hardcore fan, you know, you know all those pages. You do. Go send me a DM on all those pages so I make sure I get everything. Send me your address and I'll ship it out to you. One thing I ask of you is if you actually just take a picture with the GoPro and um, I'll send I'll send some kicking the rest TV clothing as well. I'll send you a shirt. You just send me your size and if you can take a picture so I can repost and um, maybe bring you some publicity as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys haven't checked out the clothing line, be sure to check it out. I'll pop it up all over the screen. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Kicking Their Best TV. And also, if you tag me in your apparel post, I will repost on Team Kicking Their Best TV. But thank you guys so much for the support. You guys mean so much to me. If you guys want to see more story time videos, let me know below. Be sure to smash the like button, comment, and subscribe, and hit that little bell. But thank you guys so much for the support. I'll catch you guys 